Sup guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and welcome to another Force of Will strategy video. Keep in mind that these strategy videos are not deck techs, but instead are strategy videos with the intent of inspiring you guys to go out and make your own dank builds. But in case you don't care about any of that crap, there is a deck list in the description down below. So before I get started with today's episode, I would like to first give a shout out to Grinning Revenant, which is a website that I actually personally like to use. I supported them in their Kickstarter because I believe that Force of Will content creators should stick together because it is a fairly small and growing game and everyone sticking together makes the game grow better and makes the community better and that's what I'm all about. Um, this playmat is really nice, here's their logo here, not much else to say. Very nice playmat, very uh, good and successful Kickstarter, so uh, yeah, shout out to those guys. So today's video is going to be another Wanderer video, the next one I think we'll be doing New Frontiers once again, but for the time being, we're talking about Wanderer, I think Wanderer is a great format. And um, this is one of the premier decks. The deck, of course, I am talking about is good old Vlad Tepes here. Vlad Tepes. Tepes. Anyway, um, this deck is essentially a heavy ramp deck. I am personally running a mono wind build or mono green build or however the hell you want to say that. And uh, it's actually pretty fun and surprisingly competitive. Maybe it's not surprising if you have played Force of Will for um, a decent amount of time. You may be familiar with good old Vlad here. So. Let's get down to the nuts and bolts and talk about what goes in the deck. So the deck is about half ramp and then half control with a little bit of like utility thrown in. And here we can see some of the ramp. I run a full playset of Sacred Elf, a fantastic card with gorgeous artwork. I really, really like the Moon Breeze Elf. I run a full playset of these. It adds Moon Will, as you can see, but it also cannot be attacked, so it can't be like easily picked off. I think this is actually a fantastic card for this deck. I also run a full playset of the classic Elvish Priest, once again, basically the same thing as Sacred Elf, but with uh, less good artwork, I would say. I also run a full playset of Gretels. We are running 20 Wind Magic Stones in the Stone deck. That's it, just 20 straight up Wind Magic Stones, so you will always hit a stone with Gretel, which is really good. Another fantastic ramp card. And then, of course, we are running a, another full playset of Feetsing the Magus of Holy Wind, or Magus of Holy Wind. And this card's actually quite good. The three cost is pretty high for Wanderer, but it's not that big of a deal for this deck because we're ramping out so hard. And if you don't know what she is, uh, she's a 500-700 uh, with Quick Cast, which is excellent. And when she enters the field, um, you can prevent all damage that would be dealt by Target Resonator this turn. So you can do like a Quick Cast, you know, prevent all the damage, block something else, you know, something like that. Um, and she also can rest to produce one will of any color. Fantastic card. Um, Helps gum up the board and stop some aggression because you'll probably be facing a lot of aggression. And then I just run two of Hansel and Gretel. And I think this card's a little bit underrated. Uh, it is a 400-400 for four Wind Will. And what it says is when this card enters the field, draw a card and put the top card of your Magic Stone deck uh, into your Magic Stone area rested. So that's basically like pretty sweet two for one. You get a stone from the top of your deck in the field and you draw a card. Very, very good. The four Wind. Not a big deal in this deck. All right, so now that I've talked about the ramp, which I wanted to do before I talked about the ruler, um, we're gonna talk about the ruler. So our ruler is Vlad Tepes. The uh, J ruler side is also Vlad Tepes, but we don't give a shit about the J ruler side. There will never be J activating her. Why? Because all we care about is this one line right here. You can pay two of any, and this card deals 200 damage to target opponent, and you gain two life. And that's the whole goal of the deck. You ramp out, get a lot of will, a lot of will producers and you just destroy your opponent just by like pinging them out for 200 life every single time you can um <clears throat> you can hold up a lot of will and hold back a lot of control cards which i will be going over next and other quick cast stuff like feetsing which i also already covered so let's talk about some of the control aspects of the deck all right so i called it control but i'm basically talking about a crap load of counter spells so i run a full play set of all of the ones that i run a full play set of wall of wind it's a pretty good card players like to uh tap out i guess you could call it or use all of their will so you can kind of get them with this and i think this is a fantastic card good in early game and decent in late game because of something else that we also run which i will talk about in our like toolbox section i also run a full play set of absolute cake zone i run you know full play set of uh hansel or gretel <laughs> hansel i run a full play set of gretel which makes this card even better you just can't lets you cancel target normal spell, which is basically any non-resonator spell. And then if you have a Gretel, you can draw a card. So that's fantastic. And then of course I run a full playset of Zeke's The Ancient Magic. This card is ridiculous. 
I've talked about it in my Scheherazade a Wanderer strategy video. It's got this giant wall of text. It lets you count, uh, basically counter uh, resonator spells. It lets you pump your dudes up and it lets, makes it so you're, uh, uh, you can shuffle your uh, graveyard and your stone deck back into the respective decks. And it also makes it so that a resonator can't be targeted by spells or abilities. Most of the time you're just going to be countering a resonator. But um, there are some circumstances which you could like, I don't know, shuffle your deck back in in a super grindy matchup or something like that. Alright, so here is the toolbox section. I only run four different cards in this section. Everything else is either a counter spell or a ramp card. And some of these kind of help with that, but we'll, we'll go over first. So first we have a uh, two planting beans. Planting Beans is actually a pretty good card. It lets you search your deck for a card and put it into your graveyard, and if you pay the Awakening cost, you get to put it in your hand. You're always going to put it in your hand. We'll always have enough will to do this. We generate a crap load of will, so searching out for a counter or one of the other cards that I'm going to mention in a minute uh, is vital, especially in regards to sideboarding. Getting one of your like key sideboard cards in certain matchups will be crucial for you winning because they... Because of uh, Vlad's strategy and only pinging him out with the 200 and gaining 200 life, there's a lot of uh, stuff that counter that pretty hard, and uh, these will help you get answers to counter their counters. Next, I run two Foment of the World Tree. This card basically lets you pitch your hand and draw that many cards plus one. And by pitch your hand, I think you just shuffle it back into your deck, right? Put any number of cards to the bottom of your deck. Okay, so you should put any number of cards in your hand under the bottom of your deck and then draw that many cards plus one, and then you get a gain 800 life. Yeah, 800 life. This is really good late game if you're stuck with a bunch of like bad counter spells like Wall of Wind or whatever if they have like a crap load of open uh, will and you're trying to get something specific, maybe just more ramp stuff to finish them off quicker. I think this card's actually pretty good. And then finally for the toolbox, I have my two silver bullets. I have my Avatar of the Seven Lands Alice and Scheherazade, the Teller of the Crimson Moon. And these cards are actually super, super good. They cost a lot of will to play. Alice costing 6, Scheherazade costing 5, but they do very, very powerful things and help stop a lot of uh, aggressive decks or decks that otherwise would stomp you into the ground, which is why um, the planting beans are so useful. You can search up for either one of these if you need them. Uh, so let's go over what these do real quick. So good old Alice, she's pretty good. She's a 1500-1500, pretty big body. She has quick cast and precision, and if damage would be dealt to you, deal that damage to this card instead. So this card really hoses over burn decks. They need a lot of burn to get through her, and a lot of burn decks don't run straight up resonator removal, so this is actually very, very good against them. And also good against like turbo style decks with a lot of like little minions. In the same vein, Scheherazade, Tell of the Crimson Moon, is also quite good. What she does is um, when she enters the field, you can choose a race. As long as you control this card, J resonators of the chosen race cannot attack you. So say their whole win condition are like Gwybers or something. You can name Dragon and then they can't attack you with them. As long as you counter all their cards to try to kill this, it's it's actually surprisingly good and uh, probably very frustrating for them. Also, you can, uh, this is errated to three of any and two, and you can rest it to remove a resonator from the game. So it's, it's five instead of two, which is not a big deal because we will be generating a ton of extra will. So between these two cards, all the ramp, all the counters, this deck is actually pretty strong. Some people may consider it one of the stronger decks in the format. I know uh, there's a couple other pretty powerful ones out there, but this one's definitely fairly good and uh, we'll see a decent amount of sideboard hate. So let's go over our sideboard to help counter the enemy's sideboard hate. So first up and almost most importantly in the sideboard, I run a full playset of Heavenly Gust. This card is amazing at destroying what our opponents are gonna wanna do to screw us over. So what this card does, if you don't know what it does, it is a two cost, quick cast. You can choose one, destroy target addition or regalia or torrent. So if you played this um, as your, basically as you play this card, if you played one or more other cards, uh, it gains the following abilities. Destroy all addition and regalias your opponents control. So basically what that means, if your opponent's playing shackles of ice or any other thing that prevents you from gaining life or any other thing that hoses over Vlad, just blow them all up. And this also runs the benefit of hosing a lot of regalia-based strategies, too. Heavenly Gust is fantastic. And remember, we play two Planting Beans main board to help fetch out these cards when we need them. Speaking of which, I run another two Planting Beans in the sideboard, just in case. I mean, if we're getting really hosed over, you can sideboard in two Planting Beans plus all of your Heavenly Gusts, and you will almost always have a Heavenly Gust. Basically, yeah, if you just need more search, more Planting Beans. 
along a similar vein, I run another Scheherazade in the sideboard. Basically for the same reasons, if you need a uh, more, uh, I don't know, race-based stalling or whatever, or destruction, or maybe if they have a really dirtily deck and you can afford to play this. And whatever the case may be, there's another one on the sideboard. I actually find it pretty useful and sideboard it in a fair amount of times. I also run a full playset of Law of Silence. This one is... I don't know if it's needed in the deck, but I think it's still pretty good. What it does is it's a two-cost, quick cast, chant, and it just makes it so your opponent can't play spells um, or resonators in that turn. So you just play it at the beginning of their turn, they can't play anything, and uh, you get to go again. It's also really good at disrupting combos and other things like that. And last but certainly not least, I run a full playset of Gale Force. Um, Gale Force is a fantastic, like, silver bullet type card because it straight up destroys a resonator with flying just for a single low, low price of one wind will. Uh, what are we going to be destroying? This basically destroys Gwybers, but it also destroys Mephistopheles if your opponents are running that. And a, you know, veritable gambit of other possible flyers. So th this card's actually very, very good. Uh, maybe against, you know, Nine-Tailed Fox, but mostly Gwybers. You see a lot of Gwybers in Wanderer. And of course, I can't forget my 20 Wind Magic Stones. Yes, I did mention this at the beginning, but yeah, we run all 20 Wind Magic Stones because we you know, go through our stone deck so quickly, you're gonna need them all. All right, so there you guys go. That was my Force of Will, Wanderer, Vlad, Big Green, Ramp Strategy, or what the, whatever the hell you guys wanna call it. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, maybe leave a like, maybe even subscribe if you have not already. Maybe comment on the type of video you would like to see next. I think I'm gonna do some New Frontier stuff next. I wanted to do Prissia, but there's a shitload of Prissia decks out there right now, and I think it's kinda like the new thing to like hate on. I'm not the kind of person who jumps on those sort of bandwagons, but I have been seeing it a lot. Maybe I'll do something weird. Maybe I'll do something like a Kaguya or a uh, Gil Lapis or something like that. I still want to build a Gil Al Hamat deck. I have not picked one up yet. I do intend to pick up a full art one, so maybe I'll do that when I do that. Regardless, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. The channel is getting very, very close to 400 subs. I think I'm going to be doing a giveaway somewhere around that. I have some good ideas of what I want to give away, and they are actually pretty spicy, and you guys are gonna like them, and probably want them if you don't have them already. And I think I might put an option up, at, like, if you're a Magic player, you maybe pick a Magic card, or if you're a Force of Will player, you can pick the Force of Will card. But I digress. I just want to thank you guys one more time for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Have a good one all, and I'll see you later.